So, hello everyone. My name is Patrick. I'm the founder of NMaker. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, since there was no specific topic required for this presentation, I actually thought very long and hard about it. Uh, I, I played with the idea of just talking about something which only I care about and no one else cares, like StarCraft 2. But in the end, I decided to not go for that and um, instead talk about, you know, NMaker and what we do at NMaker and uh, where we are going with NMaker. This is the only slide I have, so you're going to be looking at that, that green uh, dot for a very long time now. But um, yeah, maybe maybe a little bit to, to start about myself. Um, as, as you know, my name is Patrick, I'm 24 years old. I'm a computer scientist, so I studied computer science in Stuttgart in Germany and uh, then during my bachelor thesis, which I was writing about Cardano actually and about building a metaverse on Cardano, I decided to take a week off and create back in the day NFT Maker which was actually one of the very first uh, tools that you could use to actually do something on Cardano, which was different than just sending ADA from A to B, right? Or staking ADA. Um, Alessandro, who's also in the audience, made the first space buds, and then I thought, okay, look, this guy's the same age as me, uh, studies the same thing as me, he's also from Southern Germany, let's try this as well. So I took a week off and built NFT Maker. And then I released it one day before um, my birthday, actually. And... Uh, I was just busy during my whole birthday fixing bugs and, and doing customer support and so on. And every single thing that could happen happened. So I didn't get any sleep. And uh, I think my, my uh, you know family and everyone who was there visiting for the birthday were not too happy about that. But that really marked the beginning of my like web-free business journey. So after that, I decided, okay, let's... Uh, continue with, with the studies, let's finish my bachelor thesis, but actually move towards building NFT Maker into something bigger and creating something bigger out of it. And um, yeah, and then the next, the next step, the next logical step was to go from a very small tool like NFT Maker version 1 was, where you could mint one NFT and you could literally just upload an image, add some information and mint the NFT in like, I don't know, a minute or 30 seconds or so. Um, move from that towards a tool where you can actually do that with like thousands and thousands of NFTs or even millions of NFTs. So that's how uh, back in the day it was called NFT Maker Pro came to life. Um, now we call it NMaker Studio. And NFT Maker Pro or NMaker Studio was essentially an API. So it really allowed to just you know, create uh, unique payment addresses for each NFT and then just sell the NFT in a white label way on your website or in your application, stuff like that. And it has been quite uh, quite successful. A lot of people have used it. We're responsible for almost 1.5 million NFTs on Cardano at this point. And, um, and you know, the, the, the core idea is still the same as it was with NFT Maker version 1. It was uh, always about making things more accessible and always about just giving users the option to do something. Like, I don't care what you do. I just want you to use Cardano. I want you to actually just, you know, think about what, you know, what you can do and, and flood Cardano with amazing ideas because I truly believe in this concept of uh, leveling the playing field. And the world that, that you know, I and, and Endmaker wants to see is a world where everyone has equal opportunity and can just create. And, you know, then there's probably going to be like 90% shit in a way, but... Uh, 10% might be amazing and 10% of, of 100 million projects uh, are way better than 10% of, of one, 1 million projects, for example. So um, yeah, that's, that's what we did. And uh, it has grown tremendously since the beginning. So now it's actually a lot more than just a minting tool. We also have other API capabilities. We also have a non-API capability. So we have no code tools. You can literally go in there, upload 10,000 NFTs without touching any any um, coding language or anything like that, just per, via drag and drop and then sell it directly via our uh, no-code tool called NMaker Pay, which is essentially like, like PayPal for NFTs in a way. And, um, and we're continuing to just build that functionality out. So we want to you know, go the next step. And we have really seen that trend towards like real world use cases. So we started very much with those uh, you know, regular NFT drops like the apes and so on, but um, that's not very interesting and not very much what, what, what blockchain is about, in my opinion. So it's more that we are moving towards real-world use cases now, like what we've seen with Empower just now, which I find, think is absolutely amazing. I think those NFTs were, were minted with NMaker as well. So we try to just 
make it easy for people to for, for businesses to onboard people that have never touched crypto before and uh, unfortunately this is still a very big difficulty because right now you have to go to an exchange you have to buy ADA you have to download NAMI wallet you have to send data to NAMI wallet then you have to figure out which marketplace do I use and so on so the entry barrier is extremely high and it's not feasible for any company that just wants to use the benefits of web, of web3 and nfts um, so we so we need to build tools to make that easier and that's really what what endmaker is about so we try to make those tools accessible both from a, a developer perspective or like a creator perspective but also from the end customer perspective and to do so we are we're creating like a whole tool set so uh, as we started very simple but we're scaling into many different areas like right now we are working on uh, an account system which might sound a little bit uh, easy but an account system connected to a custodial wallet so essentially we will be offering a custodial wallet together with a partner where the idea is that if you want to pay via credit card you can do so you don't have to go to an exchange or anything like that but instead you pay via credit card and then you uh, immediately get an, a custodial wallet assigned to your account and then you can have the, your first nft and it, the idea is not to you know have like millions of users that are always using the system and are staying inside this account system and custodial wallet but the idea is to onboard them and then show them the benefits of, of web free and of true ownership over your assets and then uh, offboard them again and then show them okay look now that you're ready you can actually move to those non-custodial um, solutions and and do things that are really crypto and really really um, decentralized so uh, these are these are basically the, ne the next steps and uh, to give you maybe a little bit of an, an insight of how we operate um, so we have basically two different parts to endmaker so we have the product side which is very much spearheaded by me where we say okay we want to build the most amazing products and we want to make them ex as accessible as, as possible so everyone can just register and, and you know do everything that they want themselves which is amazing because sometimes I don't even know when projects launch and I just see oh you know this random cool thing launched like empower for example launched completely without me knowing um, which i think is just brilliant but then on the other side we also have a, a sales arm and we are very active in just reaching into the traditional world so we really go to all these conferences we talk with a lot of companies especially in switzerland especially in germany of course where, where i'm from and we try to figure out with them together like okay what is your product that you have right now and how, how can it be enhanced by web3 like does it even make sense sometimes it doesn't make sense to add web3 to something but in many cases it does make sense and um, yeah and we've been approached by by an incredible amount of, of companies that are interested like for example real estate is, is a very hot, hot topic everyone is interested in just bringing real estate to the blockchain because then you can do like incredible things with it like trading it very quickly or fractionalizing it and, and selling it to many owners and so on and just decentralizing and, and making real estate more accessible in a way again um, but obviously that's not not an easy target to do because uh, you know especially here in the first world um, real estate is not something which you can do without regulatory compliance and uh, without lawyers involved and so on so it's always like these long-term projects but then on the other side we have like more entertainment focused businesses that we try to work with like for example bookio which i'm a big fan of or uh, project noom or other other projects that are trying to revolutionize the um, just the entertainment industry and there you don't have to be as careful from a regulatory perspective so those are like the low-hanging fruits which we will see in the next i don't know a few months or, or years and we can grow really with these with these products so that's yeah that's that's basically what it's about I can see that my, my time is almost over so maybe um, as a closing remark the the last thing I want to mention it that is that it's it's really important that everyone gets to be creating and everyone can just try out to, to build something I think that's the most important thing just you know to see Cardano and then figure out okay what can I do to accelerate Cardano what can I to build on Cardano and not just think okay someone else is gonna make me rich because I bought some ADA coins but instead just sit down and think about okay how can i push this to the next level thank you very much